Where's my... Oh, there it is. We may want to put Latoya's first slide up. Okay, it's a little bit after two, so we'll wait a few more minutes as people are still logging in, and then we'll get started. Associate Director, congratulations. Okay, I said we were going to wait, but I think I'm going to get started at least with some preliminary introduction. So um, my name is Rose Wesson. Uh, I'm Associate Provost for Research here at City College. The session is being recorded. And um, if colleagues or, or maybe you want to have questions and you want to review some of the information that was presented, the recordings and the slides will be available on the uh, Office of Research website. So give us a few days to, to get them posted, but all of the presentations from the research seminar series will be posted on the Office of Research, the CCNY Office of Research website. I'm also going to talk a little bit about next month's presentation, um, just in case I forget at the end of this one. So we, the Office of Research, we, um, we schedule these research seminar series presentations once per month. It's usually the second Thursday of every month. Um, but next month, November, it's actually going to be the first Thursday in November. November 2nd will be our, our next research seminar series presentation. The topic of that one will be um, Cayuse animal oversight. So if you're doing research with animals, if you need I cook approval or you need the committee to review some of your research uh, protocols, then that's the session that you should also attend. We won't discuss any of that today, but next month on Thursday, November 2nd is the next presentation. Um, also, I think um, we've been generally asking people to hold questions. You can put them in the chat. 
um, I think Latoya probably will have time at the end of the presentation to take questions. And um, I think those are my housekeeping items that I needed to go over. So first, well, first, so next, let me just say that uh, welcome. And uh, we're gonna talk today about Caillou's proposal and award management. Caillou's, and Natalia will go into that, is the, is the system that we use here at City College in the Grants and Sponsored Programs Office to submit, to submit proposals. But Latoya will talk more about that. Latoya Watkins Stewart is the Associate Director of the Grants and Sponsored Programs Office. And I think with that, I'll turn it over to you, Latoya. Thank you, Dr. Weston. Um, good afternoon and thank you for joining us. Uh, this seminar series will provide an overview of the CAIUS modules here at City College. And hopefully at the end of this presentation, you will have a more in-depth knowledge of each module and its functionality. So what is CAIUS? CAIUS is an electronic admi administration software package that is designed to simplify the preparation and electronic submission of proposals. Um, it allows for easy approvals. Um, Cayus has replaced uh, transmittal sheets with a simple online process for reviewing and approving proposal for submissions. Um, it has integrated record keeping, principal investigators, and the grants and sponsored program staff will have easy access to proposals, award notices, progress reports, and other documents, regardless of the submission method. Also, it provides better tracking and reporting. Over time, the tracking of proposal and award data has been more robust. It allows for faster and more accurate reporting at the department, division, slash school, and college level. So um, on this next slide, we're going to discuss the CAIUS module at City College. So we currently have implemented the sponsored programs, which is known as CAIUS SP and also CAIUS 424. Um, in spring of 2024, we will be implementing the Cayuse Animal Oversight IACUC. As Dr. Weston um, indicated, there will be an in-depth presentation on that on November 2nd, so I will not be discussing this module in this series. So I'm going to start off with a discussion of Cayuse SP. So what is Caius SP? Caius SP is a module that allows for PIs to quickly and accurately prepare a proposal for internal routing and review. And it acts as a hub for which research administration gain full transparency into the entire research life cycle from awards, budgets to accounts. In conjunction with Caius SP, um, sorry, in conjunction with the Research Foundation web report accounting portal, it helps us and PIs to access the award records. Why Caius SP? So Caius SP allows for easy proposal case management. It allows for institutional oversight, department approvals, research compliance flags, and award management. In summary, Caius SP will facilitate easy proposal case management because it provides instant feedback on each externally submitted proposal. It allows for robust and intu intuitive institutional oversight as it provides the departmental officials with the tools that they need to evaluate and make decisions on submissions and effort commitments through their administrative units. It also is instrumental in identifying compliance issues which help to mitigate potential regulatory concerns for the college and CUNY at large. 
Finally, Cayus SP serves as a bridge between our proposal submissions and funded projects, which provides a wealth of information regarding trends and outcomes of various institutional layers. It is a formidable resource, which we are thankful for the opportunity to use. So before we get to Cayuse SP, um, the principal investigator reaches out to our office for proposal assistance. This is done through uh, the submission of a PARS request. And this is a web form, which can be found on the Office of Research webpage. Please note that once you submit this form, you are acknowledging the research compliance requirement guidelines. And at this time, you should also include a copy of your responsible conduct of research certification, which is an, um, we normally call RCR. The responsible conduct of research is defined as the practice of scientific investigation with integrity. It involves awareness and application of established professional norms and ethical principles in the performance of all activities related to scientific research. Once you do your RCR certification, this certification is valid for five years. So, once you submit a PARS, um, before we get to the Cayuse SB portal for you to complete your requirements, we at the Grants of Grants and Sponsored Office has a timeline for our proposal preparation and submission. This is normally 10 business days prior to a sponsor required application due date. We strongly ask that principal investigators try to abide by this timeline so that we have a smooth submission. Once the office is notified of your proposal assistance request, we ask that you give us two business days to review the sponsor guidelines. This may be a RFP, a RFA, a PAR uh, for eligibility. This includes PI or institutional eligibility. Once we have completed the review, then we will contact you via email regarding your submission. After we have reviewed your proposal, then we reach out to you. This is a draft of the email that is sent out to our professors. So the email covers the submission timeline. Again, excuse me, we strongly ask that you abide by this timeline. Attached to this email, you will find the financial conflict of interest forms. We ask that you complete and return this form one business day prior to you completing your Cayus SP sections. Your Cayus SP section should be completed two business days prior to you finalizing your budget with our office. You may log into the Cayus SP website from the link provided in this email or through other methods, which I will discuss in the next slide. We ask that you try and finalize your budget two business days prior to the departmental approval of your proposal. Your departmental approval should occur five business days prior to the final review of your application and final review of your application must be two business days prior to your proposal submission deadline. And again, we ask that you try to abide by this timeline so we can have a smooth submission. So as I said, you can either log in to Cayuse from the link in the email that we sent, or you may also log in via the Office of Research webpage from the CCNY website. From the Research tab, you will navigate to the Office of Research. Once you click on the Office of Research, it will take you to this web page. Then you go to Sponsored Programs. From the drop-down menu, you select the Cayu system. From the Cayu page, you will click on Login. 
once um, before you get to login, there are two other sections that I want to point out. Um, you can scroll down to the bottom of that same page uh, where the login button is. And from there, you will see the option of signing in as a new user, or you want to um, change your password, or you have forgot your username. For those who are new to the system, our office will normally create a username and provide you with a temporary password, which will be sent to you. Once you receive your login credentials, you can come navigate to this page and then change your temporary password. Also, again, if you are an existing user and you forget your username and you forget your password, you can change it via the link. So once you click on login, this is what the landing page looks like. You will enter your username and your password. Your username is the first letter of your first name and your full last name. Make sure that this is in all lowercase letters, no spaces. Once you are logged into the system, you will be re redirected to a similar page where you will click on the link to Caius SP. Once you click on the link to Caius SP, uh, for the principal investigators, it will direct you to this page. Um, if you are the PI to view your proposals, you will click on view my proposals. And if you are here to certify a proposal, you will click on the certification inbox and it will show you all the proposals to be certified. If you are here as a approver, such as the Dean department chair and any other authorized approver, you will go to the proposal in my unit to view the proposals to be authorized and unit approval inbox. So if you are the PI and you click on my proposal, you will be redirected to the following page where you will see two tabs. One tab is for your unsubmitted proposal and the other is for your submitted proposal. Please note that the submitted tab indicates proposals that have been routed for approval and however are not submitted to the sponsoring agency. So submitted proposals are routed. To view the details of your unsubmitted proposal, you would need to click on the proposal number. Once you click on the proposal number, it takes you to this page. Sections in the green box are the sections to be completed by the PI. Note the first three sections in that box, which are the regulatory compliances, the, sorry, the regulatory compliances, the export control, and the intellectual property, these are all yes or no questions as it relates to your application. And please note that each proposal that you submit will require a new Cayuse SP space. The abstract section of the proposal is a text box and you have to be, and it has to be completed. You do not have to have a final abstract for us to route your proposal. A draft abstract is okay. When we uh, create your proposal space and you log in, this is how it would look. It will have the four check marks as our office, your assigned grants administrator, will have completed the sections. Once you have completed your required sections, the proposal space will look exactly like this next diagram. So once all the green check marks are, check are there, then it tells us that you have completed your section and it's time for us to route it for the approvers. So once your proposal is routed, 
we ask that the approvers, whether it's your chair, dean, or any other authorized user, complete this routing process within five business days. So the department chairs and any other authorized approver should complete their review and approval for business days prior to submission. Deans and other authorized approvers three days prior to submission and the associate provost of research and the GSP staff approves two business days prior to submission. Once your proposal has been routed, the PI will receive an email for certification of the proposal. This is the email on the left of the screen. And the department chair will receive an email to review and approve, which is to the right of the screen. Once the department chair has approved, then an email will be sent out to the dean or any other authorized uh, approver for them to approve the proposal. For approvers, you may log in to the CAIU system from the email that you received for the proposal to be uh, authorized. Or again, you can also navigate to the research, the Office of Research website, as I discussed prior. Once you log in for authorization, then you will navigate to the unit approval inbox to view the proposals to be authorized. Click on unit approval inbox. Once you click on that, then it will redirect you to the following page. You will see two tabs. One shows the proposal to be authorized and the other shows proposal that have been authorized. Click on the proposal number under the to be authorized tab for the proposal that you want to authorize. This will allow you to view the details of the application. Once you click on that, it will take you to this page. From here, you can click on the view IPF, which takes you directly into the proposal space. Once you're in the proposal space, we ask that you click on each section to review in details. So this is the view of the proposal space when it's routed. You may, once you review, you may click to authorize the proposal. If you think there is something wrong with the proposal after you review, you have the option of rejecting the proposal, or you may contact our office if you do not warrant a rejection, you can contact our office and speak to the grants administrator who has routed the proposal for your review to discuss your concerns. If you decide to go ahead and authorize the proposal, then this is what the page will look like. From here, you may enter any comments you have regarding the proposal. If you do not have any comments, then you could just simply click submit authorization. Once the application slash proposal has been approved, there are two additional emails that are sent out. One to the lead PI to let them know that the proposal has completed its approval stage and for GS, GSP to also know that the proposal has been fully authorized. After this, the GSP administrator and the lead PR will work together to do a final review and submission of the application to the sponsor. Now we will go into Cayuse 424. So what is Cayuse 424? Cayuse 424 is a web-based software that is used as an interface to grants.gov. It is a system-to-system -system submission for 100% grants.gov opportunities. And this is posted by most federal agency, which includes NIH, NSF, the CDC, Department of Ed, and various other federal agencies. Please note, however, that our office
office does not use Cayuse 424 for NSF submissions. NSF is now transitioning to research.gov, which is their own submission portal. So why do we use Cayuse 424? One of the reason is that it allows us to enter data online rather than completing all those PDF uh, forms that you find on grants.gov. So it also auto-populates institutional data. It advanced validation for grants.gov proposal. So once we create your proposal space, all your institutional information will be auto-populated in the required forms. And once we submit your proposal, it, um, can you swear to for validates the proposal? Actually, your proposal, when submitted to CAIUS424, it goes through two validation stage. It is validated through 424 and also through grants.gov. For NIH, it actually has three validations, 424, grants.gov, and we have to go into ERA Commons to check to make sure it passes the requirements from NIH. So where um, some sponsors such as NSF allows the PI to create the application, for submission, our office will create your application in 424. We create the application and we grant you access. Once that is done, this is the email that you will receive to let you know that your application is created and you have gotten access to the application. The PI can click the link and it will take them to the application or you can go back to the Cayuse landing page and log in from there. Once you are logged in, you will be redirected to the following page. Sometimes um, our office get numerous calls to say, hey, I got the email, but I can't see anything in the space. This is what the page will look like. You will need to click on proposals and once you click on proposal you have to hit the show all button if you do not hit show all you will not see your proposals once you click show all it will list all your proposal it's going to be um, included submitted and unsubmitted proposal so you need to navigate to the proposal that you are currently going to be working on to be submitted. Once you click on the proposal name, so most times it's the PI's last name, the month of submission and the agency. So once you click that link, it will open up to a page similar. Not all proposals have um, this space. This in particular is um, a submission to the NIH, and this is what the space will look like. It outlines all the different forms that are needed. As I said, some of these forms are auto pre-populated, uh, auto populated, sorry. So the SF424R form is pre-populated, the performance side, the R and R other project information form. This is uh, a form that the PI will need to fill out. They will have to update PDF attachments. Key person forms the grants office along with the PI will um, populate that. The budget, our office will do. And the human subjects and clinical trial, all the technical sections of the proposal. So the human subjects and clinical trial section, the cover page supplement, the research plan. And if you do have a PHS assignment request section, then the PI will complete that section. So after all of this is done and we have reviewed your application, um, you authorize us to submit the application, then we submit. 
This is the validation from the Cayuse website to show that your proposal has been submitted. We will take a screenshot of this and we will send this to you. We will also receive an email from grants.gov to show um, to let us know that the proposal has passed validation. And um, in the case of NIH, we will go to the ERA comments to check to make sure that it also passes validation there. Okay. <laughs> So that is the end of the presentation. Um, any questions that you have, please free, please feel free to ask. <laughs> so thank you, Latoya. You know I have lots of questions. <laughs> <laughs> so let me start off with the first one that uh, I usually get this question a lot. So I'm going to ask you. Why do I need to go through the grants office to submit my proposal? Why can't I, as a faculty member or a PI, simply go to grants.gov or research.gov and submit my proposal? Okay, so as I indicated, most applications through grants.gov is a federal application. And for federal application, it is the institution that is responsible for the proposal. So all the information that is needed is institutionalized. Even though you are listed as the PI, if you do not have the authorization from the institution to submit, your application will not be accepted. So because I'm a faculty member, I still just can't submit on my own? So in grants.gov, there are some sponsors who does allow individual applications. So for example, the NEH, they do have individual applications where you as a faculty can submit for that. However, other proposals such as the NSF or NIH or Department of Ed, it has to be institutional. So I guess if there's a question, um, they faculty members should contact you yes. or the grants office, not necessarily you in specific, but the grants office as to whether um, this proposal may be submitted by the faculty or it has to be submitted by the institution. That's correct. Okay. Um, another question. My proposal is due tomorrow and I forgot to submit a PARS. Can you help me? <laughs> Please. <laughs> okay. So you have a proposal that's due tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, in reality, it will be difficult. <laughs> and it depends on who will be submitting the application. Our office, sometimes we do provide leeways if this application is being submitted by the PI. Because you have some private sponsors that allows submission by the PI. If you come to our office in that case, and we are able to accommodate your proposal, depending on the workload, we will go ahead and submit the proposal. If it's an NSF proposal or an NIH proposal, most likely, unless you are able to do all the work, you, May, may be submitted, but it's it's not a possibility. So I think you're being nice because if you look in the chat, there's some comments there. One person says no. <laughs> Another person says, please don't. So, so again, my question is, what's the problem? I mean, you say that um, the office doesn't have time if I come to you the day before a proposal is to be submitted, 
What do you mean? What do you mean the office doesn't have time? Okay, so we have caseload. So if you come to us the day before submission, that means that proposals that are due on that day, we will have to stop our review to go ahead and review your proposal. In that case, we might miss compliance um, requirements. I mean, your proposal have compliance requirement. We have to carefully review your application. So basically we will be pushing back someone else's proposal to take a look, of, look at your proposal given the short time that we have. So that's why we enforce that, please, if you can, give us the 10 days for us to review your proposal because there are specific uh, requirements for your proposal. And if we do, say we do take your proposal the day before, and there was, there's an institutional letter that's needed. I can't come to you the day before to ask you for an institutional letter, or I cannot go to the president the day before to ask for an uh, institutional letter. So we have to take into consideration all those facts. What is needed for this proposal to be submitted? Got it. Okay. So the bottom line is don't do it. And if you do do it, then it's not likely that the proposal will be submitted. All right. Um, so there are some other questions coming in the chat, but I've got a couple more. So, you know, my chair or my dean, I can look in Cayuse and see where the routing is in my proposal. And my chair and my dean, you know, it's the day before submission and they have not approved the uh, submission. What can I do? What happens? What, 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 what's the result? Okay, so our office uh, also review the routing um, chain of the proposal. So if we realize that your chair or your dean has not approved the proposal, we sometimes reach out to them to let them know we have a proposal that is due tomorrow. Can you go in and review for approval? Um, our office will allow if your chair approves your proposal before submission, we will go ahead and submit it. We have to have at least one approval of your proposal to go ahead and submit. So that's why we're emphasizing, please follow our timeline, go in, review, so we can be in compliance with the sponsor. Okay. Now, after it's submitted, I find out that I have made, because you guys don't make mistakes, but I have made a mistake in the proposal. What do I do? Okay, so there are <laughs> different scenarios for this. Did we submit your proposal two days before the sponsor deadline? If that is the case, we can go in, withdraw that version and resubmit it. If it's after the sponsor deadline, we have the option of reaching out to the program officer. Or in the case of NIH, we can reach out to the division of receipt and referral. Sometimes they allow us to submit it, sometimes they do not. So those are the options that we have. Okay, but we but I should contact you. You should contact our office and we will reach out on your behalf. Okay, okay. Um, in the chat, is, is Fastlane still around? No, Fastlane has been decommissioned, I think as of September 25th, I want to say, but there is no longer Fastlane. So all fact, from, go can ahead. You tell, what is Fastlane? Sorry, some people may not know. Or what, okay. what is Fastlane? So Fastlane was the NSF proposal submission website. So now they have moved away from Fastlane and has gone to research.gov. Okay. Um, something about a fast track option. 
Is there a fast track option for unique situations? I think this means if, if um, you know, I'm less than my 10 days with PARS, is it possible to fast track something? So if, if you submit a proposal eight days before submission, we're not gonna reject you. Between eight and five days, we will submit your proposal. But if you're gonna push it to a day or two before, then most of the time, if it comes in with after the five days and we can do the submission in our email, we indicate that your proposal will, will be submitted as is. We will do our best to check for administrative um, compliance. We will make sure your budget is accurate and your budget justification is accurate, but all other sections are on you, the PI. You have to make sure that everything is in compliance. Okay, all right. Um, one more question, then I'll let you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, I'm planning a large proposal that is with a number of PIs, co-PIs, a number of co-PIs, and potentially a number of different institutions. Um, how far in advance do I need to let the grants office know? So in, um, in that case, if you are able to give us a month advance, because this is a large proposal and you have several other institutions, you have to keep in mind that each institution has their own timeline for submission. And they have to, uh, well, our office has to come uh, reach out to that institution to let them know that you have a PI who will be submitting an application with us and they have to go through all their required compliances and approvals, just the same as how we would have to do it. So if it's possible to give us a month advance notice, then that would be great. Okay. And then in the chat, um, are we able to get these slides after the presentation? Yes, they will be posted at the Office of Research website. Along with the Zoom recording that we are still recording. So I don't think I have any more questions. Um, I don't see any more questions in the chat. So thank you. Um, thank you, Latoya. And if there are additional questions, feel free to reach out to um, anyone at GSP. Doesn't have to be Latoya. Um, and I was going to say the next session, as I said in the beginning, will be still on Cayuse. Oh, I know what I was going to say. Still on Cayuse, but it will be the animal care and Aya Cook kind of modules. So some of you, I don't know, um, a lot of new faculty are on, on here as well, but CUNY, as I believe LaToya uh, referred to, CUNY will also be submitting or rolling out a new version of Cayuse that will be CUNY-wide. Uh, City College had looked into adding a different, different modules for what we have here at City College in terms of our Cayuse, and we've kind of stopped that since CUNY is coming out with something that will be um, sort of what we were looking at initially. So Keep your ears open, keep your eyes open. There will be future announcements about changes to Cayuse. But, you know, since this is coming from CUNY, it's going to be rolled out to all of the campuses over the next three years. So it's it's going to take some time before we before we get to a, a new and improved version of Cayuse. Um, is there a user manual available for, for what? PIs are to do within Cayuse? So on the Office of Research website, there is a user manual um, <laughs> for Cayuse. Um, let me just go ahead and 
I'll put the um, link in the chat, but again, if you go to the Office of Research and navigate to the CAIU system as I showed in the presentation, when you scroll down, there is a link for a full Cayuse SP tu tutorial that can be used. Okay. Thank you again. If there are no more questions, then thank you everyone. And we will we'll hope to see you again in November, if not before on November 2nd with our next research series, uh, seminar series presentation. So thank you and um, have a good rest of the afternoon. Thank you guys. Thank you, goodbye.